I still feel a right numpty chatted to camera. As Lorenzo says, Montequila, 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 something like that. Butter in Spanish. Oh, the joys of Stonehenge. Mm, this isn't looking good. 874 miles to John O'Groats. It's Welsh, that is. Fluent. Ronda. In the valleys. What's going on now? Oh, no. <laughs> no, the bike won't stop. I love that bike. I loved it. Oh, well. Well folks, this is the big surprise. What we're doing is we're testing the new GS Adventure, the new 1250, and I'm gonna be going to do the UK Iron Butt Four Corners run, which is from the start point, which is here, Coopers, Tunbridge Wells, I'm gonna to go to Land's End, then to St David's in Wales, then up to John O'Groats, then down to Ness Point, and then back here. And I've got 48 hours to do it. So about 2,000, 2,200 miles. What better way to test the new adventure? Jack, over to you. I think that's pretty. Not a bad way to try the 1250 out first ride, is it? Yes, yeah, a bit of an extreme ride, but uh, yeah, thank you very much for letting me try. That's no, a pleasure. Rather you than me this weekend, <laughs> given the forecast. Yeah, it's going to be going to be wet, I think, and windy. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit. As you said, this is the new 1250. Mm -hmm. uh, this GS one is the exclusive model. Uh, we're actually going to put you on the adventure. Okay. The, uh, yeah, thank the tank frames and the extra wind protection. Definitely. Um, yeah. This weekend, definitely. Been in the showroom a couple of months now, um, so I dare say most of you viewers might have seen it up at the bike show. Um, at their local dealers, yeah. maybe a few of them have ridden it, maybe a few of them even have one in their garage, lucky them. <laughs> um, so it's all about this new engine, yep. 1250cc, powers up to 136 horsepower now, okay. and who doesn't like a bit more power? It was 125 wasn't it? It was 125, yeah. you're up 11. These go to 11. Uh, we've also got 14% increase in torque, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it's most all about, is the usability of it. Beautiful. Um, it's now variable valve timing, which BMW have labelled as shift cam. Mm -hmm. um, without boring the viewers too much, um, it's quite technical, there's some good YouTube videos of um, how the system actually works on the Motorhead website. Yeah. Essentially we've got two cam profiles, so as you're pootling along, one valve opens slightly later than the other, which creates a nice clean burn, mm -hmm. good for emissions regulations, yep. obviously future proofing the bike for emissions is critical yep. for the future. Um, but when you start having a bit of a play, input more throttle, literally the cam will shift over, there's a little pin that makes it shift, and that's giving you the full profile, which is giving you yeah, the top end figure of 136 brake there, awesome. you get a good bit of economy, good bit of usability, but then when you're ready, you can start having a play. Nice. Um, Bit of a mixture from reviews, you might have seen a few reviews yourself so far. Some people saying it's very different, some people saying um, yeah, it's not so different. Really looking forward to seeing what you think, especially okay. as you know, Helda's had a bit of work done, hasn't she? Yeah, so. she's been off to Hilltop, so I, I know a lot of you folks are interested to know how the new 1250 engine compares to a Hilltop 1200, and so am I, to be honest. So um, it'll be good to see how, how they compare. Yeah, absolutely. I've done about 1,500 miles so far on the new 1250 engine, right. and it's, it's impressive. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. So. Uh, be interested to see what you think. Um, like I said, putting on the adventure so you can have a bit more fuel in there, which I think you will be appreciative of up in, uh, up in Scotland, maybe. Yeah. Uh, a bit more wind protection with a slightly bigger screen on it. Um, uh, new British uh, A41s on there as well. Yes. You're probably quite keen to try them, aren't I you? am. I've, I've not tried the, the new A41s. I've had the T31s on them, but uh, I'm interested in how the, the, the A41s cope. Yeah. They're the sort of semi road, off road ones, aren't semi road, off road, yes. It's their new new adventure tyre. Mm -hmm. um, out of the crates, these are either coming with the Bridgetons or they come with the Anarchies. Yeah. Um, it's about 50 50 at the moment. Oh, cool. The demos fit with the A41s. So we'll see how you get on. Awesome. Ride safe, and we'll see you back here in 48 hours or so. Great. Well, here's all for Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Cheers, Jack. And thanks so much to Coopers for, for uh, trusting me with the with the new bike. Off we go. Well, folks, let us get on the road. So, like I said, this is going to be the Four Corners Run, part of the Iron Butt Association's rides. So, phone is charging up. I'm just going to try this new tracker, which is Relive, that's the one. This is a new tracker called Relive. I don't know if it'll work for something this big. Alright, okay. So this tracks the entire route. Now hopefully, hopefully, I'll be able to track the whole journey over 48 hours. All going well. And then at the end of it, should be able to generate quite a cool little map. 
we'll see. It's not a bad looking bike, is it? Quite like this. The exclusive, this sort of brown colours. I'm liking this. Okay, so it's in road. I need that changed to dynamic. And then suspension, dynamic. Let's just leave it in dynamic auto for the moment. Okay. Right, sort of mirrors out. Beautiful. Well, let's go. Oh, we are 9.06 is the official time I left. Very familiar feel to it, very smooth though, I have to say, that is incredibly smooth, straight off the gate, but this does feel very nice. Hope you can see me there folks, and that blipper, I mean this bike is just under 600 miles on the clock at the moment, but that blipper is already as smooth as butter, they really have nailed that BMW. Oh, it's lovely! I'm in love folks, I am in love I think already. Just done a little bit of sort of commutey riding through the uh, town of Tunbridge, Tunbridge Wells there. And now I'm out into the country lanes. And this thing is, it's like you are gliding along on some sort of luxury shag pile carpet. It is beautiful. The handling is so light and smooth. You can feel everything through the bike, it's lovely. Not in a bad way, but I just mean it's it's very confidence inspiring. The tyres are actually the Bridgestone A41s. And even already, they feel amazing. I'm really impressed with these. These feel a lot better than the T31s did. I didn't like the T31s at all on the GS. Mind you, this is much colder. I'm not, you know, I'm not accelerating or braking hard like I was up in the Spanish mountains in the summer, but uh, these just feel beautiful so far, planted, rock solid, loving them, really enjoying it so far, and I'm just poodling along. There is so much protection so far, it's not started raining yet, but there is so much protection from this great big screen and from the big body of the, uh, of the GS adventure. I'm looking forward to this, this is going to be a good ride I think, touch wood. <whistles> what I have realised is I forgot a sticker for the TFT screen, which means there's going to be a lot of blurring going on. Takes me forever, that. That quick shifter is so smooth. Love it. Now this does feel a little bit higher up than uh, my standard GS. I've got it in the dynamic auto suspension setting and dynamic engine mode, which is pretty much identical to what I have on the on Helga, except Helga I now have her set on uh, the hardest suspension constantly. So it's not the auto one where it continually adapts, it's just set hard all the time. I didn't like it on the standard GS on Helga because the auto sometimes just felt a wee bit squishy when you were riding hard, you know, accelerating out to the corners up in the, the Picos and braking hard into bends, it just it just didn't feel as planted as I liked. At these sorts of speeds, it feels amazing. Um, I doubt I will get to, to test the dynamic auto suspension settings on this bike, on the GS Adventure, on this ride. We'll see. Right, some nationals. Wow, that turn of speed's impressive. That handling is lovely. This engine is so refined. Wow! This is such a comfortable and confidence inspiring ride. Oh, I love it. This is how riding used to feel for me. started and we're just away to pick up the 272. Those of you in the know will know and those who don't you're gonna find out. 
The A272 is a cracking biking road in the southeast of England. Only trouble is, it can be heavily policed, but it shouldn't be today because the weather's terrible and it can get really, really busy with traffic. Best to hit it mega early in the morning or later on in the evening during the summer months. However, you got to look out for deer and all the usual things. But it is a good, fun road. But take care through the villages, slow down through the villages. Otherwise we'll get banned from it. Currently three degrees. Come on, there we go. It's got a lovely pickup. It's just beautiful. The difference in power, it'll trundle along, no problem at all. You twist the throttle and just boof, off it goes. Really impressive. I can't get over how smooth the whole thing is. It is like butter. I thought mine was an improvement on Herman. Helga's a 2017 stroke 2018 bike, GS1200. And Herman was the sort of 16 stroke 17 GS1200. And they just seem to get progressively smoother and smoother and smoother. This is just beautiful. what this Wazak in the Range Rover's doing. He keeps slowing right down and crawling along. Oh, this is the best bit of the 272. That power is phenomenal. Just feels effortless. Wow, I'm loving this, folks. Felt a little bit slidey there on the tyres. No difference really between the Adventure and the standard GS when it comes to commuting through traffic. Even though it's like 30-40 kilograms heavier, the weight is still so low down with a boxer engine that she just feels planted. You know, you can trundle along in first gear, hardly touching the throttle at all. And she just feels stable as a rock. And I've got no issues sort of weaving my way through traffic. Some people seem to think they're, they're, they're riding a great big ocean-going liner or something. They need so much room, but you really don't on this, you know. If the handlebars fit through, the bike will fit through. And it's got such a good steering lock, the GS, that you can knit one, purl one through traffic. Lovely. It's no problems at all. Way easier than a sports bike. Although with a sports bike, they're much lower, so you can get underneath uh, wing mirrors and things like that. With this, you kind of have to do the shuffle to get through wing mirrors. But I am loving this, folks. What a machine. Well, the rain's set in. I feel it right around my neck. The rest of my body's not too bad. I have brought a waterproof sort of rain jacket with me. I think I'm probably going to whack that on. I'm going to head to Lumi's just now. Need a coffee. And then after that, it should be non-stop all the way to Land's End. Try and get some more major, faster roads. After Lumi's. Ooh, it's not a good start, is it? I am an hour and three quarters into the challenge, and I'm tired. I have just come off a of night duty, though, so, you know, give me some slack. Oh, it's a 60 mile an hour stretch of road, and people are doing 35. Awesome. Ooh. Traffic. What did I say about traffic? Every stretch of good road, there's just been traffic on it. Oh, take me back to Spain. My plumbing visor's steaming up as well. Quaffy. Give me quaffy. 
three degrees. When will I see you again? Right, you are all going to have to bugger off. She's the one they talk about when everyone is feeling bad. And they think the things you said is all they ever need to hear. I don't mind a bit because all the things they say ain't gonna do to get my soul or get my brain to wind up. I'll tell you what, folks, for an opening sort of two hours on the bike, a lot of people said there's no real noticeable difference between this and the GS I've got, 2018 one. But I'm going to beg to differ. I think there's a big difference, I really do. The power is just instant, smooth, it's awesome. I am very impressed. Time for a brew. I chickened out folks, I was going to have a little chat to you in Loomis, but look how busy it is, it's rammed. I still feel a right numpty chatting to camera when there's people around. So I thought, I've had my bacon bap and my cup of coffee, feel a bit more alive. So I thought I'd hit the road and get a move on down to Land's End. 200 odd miles to go to the first checkpoint. The first checkpoint. I'm now as wrapped up as I can be on this trip. I've got no other clothing left. I have got seal skin socks and normal socks over the top. Then on top of that I have a Halverson base layer top, long sleeve base layer top. Then I've got my Wolf Tech Tour bottoms, the, the trousers. Then I have a Buffalo fleece line jacket. And over the top of that, I've got my Icon Raiden motorcycle jacket. Then I have, I'm not sure what make they are, just cheap waterproof over trousers. And cheap waterproof, hopefully, jacket over the top of that. And then I have a balaclava and a normal little cheap buff neck warmer. And on my hands, I have my trusty Knox Zero to Out Dry Winter Gloves. I've got the heated grips piping away on level two. And at the moment, I'm not feeling too bad at all. It's gonna get a lot colder though, so we shall see. I think the key to this one is going to be staying relatively dry. Cold's one thing, but if you're wet and cold, you're in for a world of pain. So if you can try and stay dry, warming up isn't too bad. You know, you just stop somewhere, stop at the services, get a coffee in you, even do some squats or press-ups or anything. Just try and get the blood going again, warm your core up. But if you're wet, that's a lot harder to do. In all honesty with you, I would love to get this done in 48 hours or less, but I just don't know if that's gonna be viable or not in this kind of weather. We shall see. 40 miles an hour in a 50. Awesome. Now I've already had an issue with the tracking app. For whatever reason, it didn't do the start from Cooper's. So I've just done it again. This time from Lumi's. So we shall see. this engine. I thought the Hilltop 1200 was smooth. This is just, well, like butter. That's the best word I can use for this, folks. Like butter. As Lorenzo says, Montequila, 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 something like that. Butter in Spanish. Be smooth like butter. That's what he says, isn't it? That's how much like Lorenzo I am. I can't even say butter in Spanish. <laughs> I tell you what, I think it's safe to say summer is over, folks. Oh, the joys of Stonehenge.
Oh god, this is gonna slow it down. There's numb nuts with no lights on. She's the one they told you where things are just the what they seem to be. And they think the danger says is all they ever need to hear. Don't believe a word, cause all the things they say they gonna do don't get my soul, don't get my brain away. Just at the Exeter Services, I think it is. What a long day so far. I was falling asleep on the bike. I was freezing cold and I needed fuel. So I just had a nice little pit stop there. Had a sort of 15, 20 minute power kip. And I feel that like I'm ready to uh, get a few more miles under my belt. We're about two hours away from Land's End. So at the moment, still on schedule. Believe it or not. Oh, and just as I say that, look what we get. Oh, Rolex. Stand still. Is that even moving? Yeah, looks like it is now. Okay. Mm, this isn't looking good. Looking good. Well, I don't really need to go very far along the M5. I thought it got warmer. It's 12 degrees now. It was 2 degrees at one stage. The adventure continues. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Another stop, folks. Oh, I was nodding off on the bike there. So I had to pull over. Just had another coffee. And I've got no idea how long I was asleep for. But I woke up and I feel awesome. I was thinking before I went to sleep, I was thinking, you know what, I'm no way I'm going to do this. I may as well just give up now. I was all ready for finding a hotel somewhere, putting my head down and going to sleep. Now I've had a little kip. I'm thinking, bring it on and get it done. I am still absolutely loving this bike, folks. What a machine. I don't get how people are saying there's not much difference between this and the 1200. The engine feels totally different to me. It's just more lively. It feels like it's got a lot more grunt. Maybe I'm just trying to justify to myself. <laughs> to, get, to get a new bike. I don't need one, I'm not going to get a new bike. All I'm thinking is, oh, I wonder what Hilltop could do with this. Woo. Anyway, let's get on the road, come on. Bring it on. Land's end in the dark. Woo nearly at Land's end, folks, nearly. About 10 minutes away. Lights are awesome, really are good on the GS. It's ridiculous that I'm literally going to get there, take a picture, grab a cup of coffee, get a receipt, and then come all the way back again. It's not heading north. Ah well, it is what it is. This bed just goes on and on and on. This sending nearly there. Oh, blimey, come on, where are you? The place is supposed to be open. And we're here, folks! Bloody hell, that is windy. We made it! That's number one! Three more to go! 874 miles to John O'Groats! But first, we've got to get to St. David's. Oh, just a little bit windy. God, that hotel better be open. 
I need to get a receipt. So I'm hoping that place is open. If it's not, what a monumental waste. Well, folks, made it to Land's End. By God, it's windy out there. Got the picture in front of the sign. Managed to get a coffee at the hotel just before Christmas do started, so I've got my receipt. I'm refreshed, uh, updated social media, and now it's time to hit the road and head to St David's in Wales. Next one. Oh, well, folks, I just had to have a little snooze. I don't know where I'm in some service station on the M5, 50 miles south of the Severn Crossing, I think. Yeah, I was struggling, so I just had a half hour kip. I'm beginning to fall behind now, though. So we're going to have to get a shift on. Okay, let's go. Oh, I needed that sleep, I tell you. So I'm about three and a half hours from St. David's. And then it's about 13 and a half hours from St. David's. Up to John O'Groats. Whose idea was this? I like this on this new, on the 1250, it comes with these uh, lane, I don't know what they call it, lane flashers or something. So say I want to overtake this car, if you just push the indicator once, like so, so, that's one, two, three, four, right, it's five, I missed one, but it'll flash five times and then it stops. If you double tap it, I think it gives you 15, Jack was saying. Let's try it then. So if we double tap, one, one, two, three, seven, eight, fourteen, fifteen. 15. I like that. Something that bugs me with the BMW, believe it or not. There is something that bugs me with BMW, apart from the price. See all the buttons. Why are they not backlit? The Triumph, they're backlit. It's brilliant. It's so good. But in the Beamer, it's not backlit. So at night time, you're faffing around, trying to find the buttons. Come on BMW, it wouldn't take much, surely, just to backlight the... Backlit? Backlight? To make the buttons backlit. Come on, for us, please do it. We're nearly into Welsh Wales. Oh, it's windy. <laughs> and it's raining again. Blimey, that's windy. Welcome to Wales. Lovely, isn't it? It's Welsh, that is. Fluent. I cannot wait to get north off the M6 and onto the good roads. Get me to Inverness and then let me spank it heading north. This bottom sort of southeast section, Land's End and St. David's just feels like it's taken forever. Feel a little snooze coming on. Rhonda in the valleys. Services three miles. Okay, that's the one for me because I might need a little sleep. I am nodding off. You gotta stay alert on the bike, folks. So easy just to go and start doing a nodding dog. Well, that can get fatal really quick. Bike. Well, on in a car. You may as well just pull off into our services. Get your head down for 20 minutes. I'm still within an hour or so of, of the schedule, but I'm probably going to lose an hour here. <sighs> Gotta go and get some shut eye. See you in 20 minutes. Or an hour. Well, folks, I'm here in St. David's, but it is currently five to four in the morning and I've got to find somewhere to get a receipt. Now, I thought I'd be smart and I'd go to the pay and display car parks and just get myself a ticket, but none of them are working. <laughs> They've all got covers over the machine. So I'm thinking, what if I take some money out of the cash machine that will be time dated, and it should say when I am. Oh, that's good. I've got 20 quid left in my account. That's good. I'm always happy with that. Right. Yeah, that's St. David's. There we go. You see that? St. David's. Date, time, 
Bosch, beautiful. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do now. How long does that say? Right, where to? From here, John O'Groats. That's saying 12 hours. So it'll be four o'clock this afternoon. <sighs> I could just make it, you know. Bugger, let's do it. We've got to really go for it. Vehicle voltage low. What's going on now? Oh, no. <laughs> now the bike won't start. No way. You don't do that to me. <laughs> why, why is it doing that? Right, it's a hill. Thank God we're on hills. You couldn't make this up, could you? I push this over to the hill. And then we're going to run it down the hill and try and bump starter. This thing has been faultless. <laughs> right up until now. I'm going to try bumping it down there. And if that doesn't work, I'm screwed. I'm stuck at the bottom of a hill. But okay. Oh well, challenge is over. Bugger. Let's try second gear. Oh, thank God for that. That's it. I'm not going to make it now anyway, so... ABS failure, yeah. Got an ABS failure. Battery's knackered. This just isn't meant to be, folks. Oh, I'm gutted. Gutted. Oh. Absolutely gutted. But it's not worth it. The bike's crook. Got an ABS fault. The battery's not holding a charge. Ooh, what's that say? Spring strut adjustment faulty. What the heck is that? It's chucking off all sorts of error codes now. I'm just gonna have to limp this home. Oh, gutted. Ooh, TFT screen's just gone off. I'm not stopping the bike, so... Uh, oh no, I don't know how much fuel I've got. I 200 odd miles, so... Traction control failure. Oh. Let's just try and limp this back to uh, some sort of civilization. Oh, I've got no bloody lights. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> no. All right, do I risk switching this off? I'm going to have to, aren't I? Okay. I've got a light. Alright, so this is totally foobard. Awesome. Nice one, BMW. God, I've never had this before. I've got to push this back in. Pushing up a bloody hill. Whew, right. Better call BMW assistant. Well, that's not what we planned, is it? I've got to St David's, the bike has died. Total catastrophic electrical failure. That's it, we're done. I've had to call recovery and um, I'll sit in the dark and wait. <laughs> All the way around the world on a Jixxer and I try and go around the UK on a GS adventure. It was all going so well. I loved that bike. I loved it. I will. <laughs>
Unfortunately, I had a few issues there with the electrics, so uh, we're back at Cooper's. Jack, what happened? You've had, the guys have had a chance to have a look at it, haven't they? We, we've had a look at it. Um, very unusual, it seems it's the battery. Right. Um, battery's obviously dropped a cell, which has sent the electrics into haywire yeah. and started shutting down. Yeah. Real shame, very sorry for you. It looked like it was all going so well up until that point. It, it was, I've got to say, I. I absolutely love this bike that engine if you've not had a chance here folks get out there and try that new 1250 engine it is i mean helga's not even eight months old so and and she's been hill topped and i see a massive difference i don't know what people are talking about when they say they don't because I, I i see and feel such a big difference in that new engine it's got drive everywhere literally from the second you touch the throttle there's just pull and it's uh, well worth a shot. Absolutely, even in the lower gears, you just get that yeah. bit more crispness, it's yeah. that bit smoother. Yeah, but I'm, I thought it was quite a big improvement myself, yeah. really yeah. good. And I think the key is there, you know, come down, give it a try, mm -hmm. um, you know, bring your 1200 down, you really, really will feel the difference yeah. riding them back to back. Yeah, it's so smooth, it's like butter, you, you know, the, the, the gear changing, everything now is just, it's just, I mean, it is a new bike, I appreciate that, but it's just silky smooth, beautiful. How did you find the adventure compared to standard GS? I've got to admit, I didn't like the adventure when I test ride test rode one like a year ago. But this one, either I've changed or maybe it's a combination of the new bike or anything like that. It, it just felt like it fitted me a lot better. Uh, I felt very planted on it, but it still felt, I think it's the new engine. It means that it still feels quite agile and quite nifty, quite sporty. Whereas I found the older, the, the, the 1200 adventure for me just felt a little bit too heavy compared to the standard one. I just didn't notice the weight or anything in this. I was thinking to myself, how am I going to get this by Mrs. Teapot, to be perfectly honest with you? <laughs> right up until the point with the electrics. But I, I believe with the new ECUs, if there's any sort of issue going on, a lot of them just shut down now. Don't they they, they just start the shutting down. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's to, you know, to maintain the bike, make sure nothing goes too wrong inside. Yeah. They do just go home. Yeah. But yeah. Well, the sound of it, you know, BMW sisters uh, looked after you all right. Yeah, I can't fault. They assessed, you know, uh, when you buy a new BMW, you get, I think, is it, is it two years? Uh, it's three years now. Three years. Yeah, three, three years warranty and three years full European breakdown cover. Okay, yeah, so yeah. that's anywhere in Europe if you break down. You just phone up the, the telephone number and they send someone to come and pick you up. They brought me all the way back from St. David's, the, the, the guys over there. I think it's Milford's who were the ones that were contracted out. They were spot on. So if anything does happen, you're still covered, you know. BMW fanboy here, absolutely. But, you know, you get the service. That's what I like about it. Well, maybe we'll try again in the summer, eh? I would love to, because uh, <laughs> I definitely want another shot of this bike. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, appreciate your help again. It's a pleasure. Anyway, mate. Thank you All very right. much. Till next time, folks.